Welcome to Stories with Friends. I'm Lulu and I work with the Buncombe County Public Libraries. And we're here to share reading and songs and our joy for all of that with you. Our first story today is by Margaret Krushenk, illustrated by Dave Saunders. A red fox crept across the yard. His black tip tail was twitching hard in the farmyard down by the pond. His tail twitched hard, for he heard the hens clucking away, cluck, 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 in their wire net pens. The hen house was next to the pond. Well, the hens, they didn't know the fox was there, but the Jersey cow, she raised her head to stare. She'd been drinking down by the pond. Well, the cow raised her head and saw something slink past the sty of the pig, who was black and pink and lived very near to the pond. The fox was seen as he slunk through the farm by the old collie dog who rushed out of the barn and raced barking, woof, 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 down to the pond. The dog rushed out with a yelp and a yap, and with, while a gray kitten was taking a nap in the shade of a bush by the pond. She sat up in fright, the little gray kit, then she narrowed her small eyes to a slit and stretched herself down by the pond. She narrowed her eyes, for she had seen the twitch of a hairy red tail with a pointy black tip. Who do you think that belonged to? Well, the cat went meow as she pounced on the tail, and the fox went yow with a shattering wail. Meow, 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 I'm going woof, woof, cluck. Well, the pig went oink as the fox leapt away. The dog went woof as they joined in the fray. The cow went moo. I'll enjoy this too. The hens went cluck. What a hubbubaloo. The pig went oink. The cat went meow. The dog went woof. The fox went ow. As the dog nipped his heels, the Jersey cow lowered her head and butted him. He fell right in the pond. Cluck, cluck. That serves him right. <coughs> I gave him a fright. Woof. I scared him away. Moo. <laughs> I saved the day. But the little gray kitten, she winked her green eye and went back to sleep in the sun by and by. The end.
story is Three Hens and a Peacock, written by Lester L. Laminac. Three Hens and a Peacock. Things were quiet on the Tucker's farm. The cows chewed their cud. The hens clucked and pecked and laid their eggs. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. Once in a while, someone would stop to buy tomatoes or corn, perhaps a quart of milk. Nothing unusual happened there until that peacock showed up. The cows and the hens and the old hound kept right on doing what they'd always done. But that peacock had never lived on a farm. He had no idea what to do. So he spread his fancy feathers and set to shrieking. Eventually, the peacock wandered down to the road. When cars whizzed by, he shook his feathers and cried out in his loudest voice. Of course, folks stopped for a closer look. Day after day, more folks stopped to admire the peacock, and they all bought tomatoes and corn, eggs and milk. Business on the Tucker's farm was booming. Everyone seemed happy to have visitors stopping by. But trouble was brewing in the hen house. The hens were squawking and clucking and flapping their wings. We do all the work around here. I'd like to see that peacock lay one single egg. Exactly. He just struts around screaming. I suppose fancy feathers are more important than laying eggs. That lazy peacock gets all the attention and we do all the work. The peacock had heard every word. For days, he moped about, moaning and groaning. I wish I could be more useful around here. Humph, clucked one hen. The others ruffled their feathers. The old hound stretched and slowly raised his head. Why not let the peacock stay here to be useful while you hens take the glamorous job down the road? The three hens began clucking to one another. What a wonderful plan! Yes, it's a fabulous idea. Oh, ladies, we simply must fancy up our feathers tonight. And nothing but our brightest beads, bangles, and bows. We'll stop traffic for sure. Why, you girls know I can strut with the best of them. The peacock perked up. Let's do it, he declared. Tomorrow, I'll stay here, sit on a nest, and cluck. And we'll get all gussied up, said the hens. We'll be so glamorous. At sunrise the next morning, the hens strutted down to the road. The peacock marched right to the hen house and poked his head inside. The hens flocked by the road, waiting for a car. When they saw one approaching, they clucked and squawked and flapped their wings in a flurry of feathers. But every car whizzed right on by. The peacock 
sucked in his tummy and wiggled from left to right, trying to squeeze through the tiny hen house door. His front half was in, his back half was out. Down by the road, those hens tried every chicken trick they knew. Still, no cars stopped. Finally, the peacock made it into the hen house. He held his breath and pushed with all his might, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not lay a single egg. Not one. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. What's that peacock doing in the hen house? asked Farmer Tucker. Who knows, said Mrs. Tucker. And what are those hens doing by the road? Not a one of them is up here laying eggs. Well, the way things are going, we aren't likely to have anyone buying eggs today, said Farmer Tucker. We need that peacock down there stopping cars. When the peacock heard that, he smiled. The biggest smile you ever saw on a bird's beak. I am helping, he thought. He squirmed back out and forth until he popped out of the cramped hen house. Then he trotted off to find the hens. The exhausted hens were all clucked out. Every feather was out of place. What a day! We couldn't get one car to stop. It's true. Why, most of them didn't even slow down. The peacock met the hens as they trudged up the road. I can tell you I'm no good at laying eggs, he said. I'm just not meant for it. One hen nodded. I put on my stellar strut and even I couldn't stop a single car, she said. I have to hand it to you, Fancy Feathers. Your job is harder than it looks. The other hens agreed. The peacock looked relieved. So the hens marched back to the hen house. The peacock strutted down the, to the road. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. And things were quiet again on the Tucker's farm. The end. girl just up off the floor. We used to go out to grandma's house every month end or so. We'd have chicken pie and country ham and homemade butter on the bread. But the best darn thing about grandma's house was a great big feather bed. It was nine feet high, six feet wide, and soft as a downy chick. It was made from the feathers of 411 geese took a whole ball of cloth for the tick. It didn't hold eight kids and four hound dogs and a piggy we stole from the shed. We didn't get much sleep, but we had a lot of fun on Grandma's feather bed. Well, after supper, we'd sit around the fire, the old folks spit and chew. Pa would talk about the farm and the war, and my granny sing a ballad or two. Well, I'd sit and listen and watch the fire till the cobwebs fill my head. Next thing I know, I'd wake up in the middle of the great big feather bed. It was nine feet high, six feet wide, and soft as a downy chick. It was made from the feathers of 411 geese, took a whole bowl of cloth for the tick. 
It hold eight kids and four hound dogs and the piggy we stole from the shed. We didn't get much sleep, but we had a lot of fun on Grandma's feather bed. Well, I love my ma and I love my pa. I love Granny and Grandpa too. I went fishing with my uncle. I wrestled with my cousin. I even kissed Aunt Lou. Ew! But if I ever had to make a choice, I guess it ought to be said that I'd leave them all and the boy down the road for the great big feather bed. It was nine feet high, six feet wide, and soft as a downy chick. It was made from the feathers of four eleven geese to the whole boat of cloth for the tick. It hauled eight kids and four hound dogs and the piggy we stole from the shed. We didn't get much sleep, but we had a lot of fun on Grandma's feather bed. We didn't get much sleep, but we had a lot of fun on Grandma's feather bed. I like coming to the Black Mountain Library because they're always friendly, their hours are excellent, they're, they're here when I come by. It was very convenient and I can bike here even though I'm in Swannanoa. You get to check out books and you get to read them. I get to learn a lot of new stuff and so I can be prepared for other days of school. Books make you smart. They have excellent children's programs, good variety, and the interlibrary lending so that I can request just about anything I want. I have loved libraries since I was this high. I have two grandchildren and we come over here probably once a week. There's a bunch of cool books. It's like an adventure in your head reading books. You can read papers, you can read magazines, you can check out books. It's quiet and it's peaceful. We come here all the time. You can read tons of books and you can be prepared for other grades and so that you can learn other books and so that you can maybe be an author when you grow up. I like reading. It's a tremendous asset to the community to have a library as nice as this. very favorite book, Cows in the Kitchen, written by June Krebin and illustrated by Katherine McEwen. Cows in the Kitchen, and you can sing along too. Cows in the kitchen, moo, moo, moo. Cows in the kitchen, moo, moo, moo. Cows in the kitchen, moo, moo, moo. That's what we do, Tom Farmer. Ducks in the dishes, quack, quack, quack. Ducks in the dishes, quack, quack, quack. Ducks in the dishes, quack, quack, quack. That's what we do, Tom Farmer. Pigs in the pantry, oink, oink, oink. Pigs in the pantry, oink, oink, oink. Pigs in the pantry, oink, oink, oink. That's what we do, Tom Farmer. Hens on the hat stand, gluck, gluck, gluck. Hens on the hat stand, gluck, gluck, gluck. Hens on the hat stand, gluck. That's what we do, Tom Farmer. This is my favorite. Sheep on the sofa, ba ba ba. Sheep on the sofa, ba ba ba. Sheep on the sofa, ba ba ba. That's what we do, Tom Farmer. Farmer in the haystack. Farmer in the haystack. Farmer in the haystack. Time to wake up, Tom Farmer! <gasps> Out of the farmhouse, shoo, shoo, shoo! Out of the farmhouse, shoo, shoo, shoo! Out of the farmhouse, shoo, shoo, shoo! Shoo, 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 shoo! Farmer in the armchair, shh, shh, shh. Farmer in the armchair, shh, shh, shh. Farmer in the armchair, shh. Lift the latch, shh, shh, shh. push the door, shh, shh, shh. creep down the hall. Shh, shh, shh. That's what we do, Tom Farmer.
The end. Here's a story that we've all heard over and over, and it's one that never gets old. Once upon a time, there was a hen and a cat. And a dog. And a little mouse. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Who all lived in a country home. Now, the cat, he loved every day to lounge on a big sofa and snooze it away. Now the dog, on the other hand, he liked to lay in the hammock outside and watch everything happen around him. And the little mouse, being the little mouse, enjoyed a chair right by the fireside. And there those three stayed, day after day. Now the hen, with all those others lounging around, had to do all the housework. Every day, all day, cleaning dishes, making food, mending clothes, sweeping floors, and not to even mention the yard work, raking, weeding, gardening. Well, one day I was out there gardening and weeding when I found some wheat seeds. Wheat seeds? Yes, wheat seeds. So I hollered out, who will help me plant this wheat? Not I, said the cat. <laughs> Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the little mouse. Well, I will. So she went outside, planted all those seeds, covered them, and went back into the housework. Well, day after day passed, and night after night, and soon that wheat grew tall. The time came for that wheat to be cut down. So the hen spoke up. Hello, cat, dog, mouse. It's time to cut the wheat. Who will help me? Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Well, I will. So she took the scythe and cut the wheat. Now at this point, it was time to take it to the mill. She asked, who will help me carry all this wheat to the mill? Well, we can already guess, the cat said. <laughs> Not I. <laughs> Not I, said the dog. Squeak, 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 squeak. Not I, said the mouse. Well, I will do it all alone. So she carried all that wheat to the mill where it was ground into flour and brought it home. When she came into the kitchen, all she had on her mind was baking. And she thought maybe she'd get some help. She asked, who will help me make this cake? 
from this beautiful flower that was just ground at the mill. Well, the cat spread his whiskers and replied, Not I. The dog, woof, 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 said, Not I. And the little mouse by the fireside said, Nope, not I. So the hen, she stirred the batter, adding eggs and butter and sugar, vanilla, all those good things that make a fine cake. She turned on the oven and put it in. Soon the kitchen started to smell of delicious things. And the cat ooh, stretched and got off of the couch. And the dog rolled out of the hammock. And the mouse got out of his chair and squeaked to the kitchen. And there they found the hen pulling a beautiful cake out. She looked at them and said, who will help me eat this cake? And all replied, me, me, me. She looked at them. She said, where were you when I needed help planting the wheat? And where were you when I needed help harvesting the wheat? And where were you when I carried all that wheat to the mill? And then back and then made the cake. Where were you? All the three animals, they stepped back. They looked at one another. She looked at them and said, you know, I will eat this cake. And next time, I imagine you will be more helpful. And that's the story of the little red hen. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a chicken, E-I-E-I-O. With a bok bok here and a bok bok there. Here a bok, there a bok, everywhere a bok bok. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a cow, E-I-E-I-O. With a moo moo here and a moo moo there. Here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo moo. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a donkey. E-I-E-I-O, with a hee-haw here and a hee-haw there, here, he, there, ha, everywhere, hee-haw, old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O, old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a, hmm, walrus. Walrus? Yeah, he had a walrus. E-I-E-I-O, with an R-R here and an R-R there, here and an R-R there and an R everywhere, an R-R, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Next story is Farmyard Beat by Lindsay Craig. Chicks can't sleep, chicks can't sleep, chicks can't sleep because they got that beat. Peep, 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 peep. All that peeping wakes up sheep. Sheep can't sleep, sheep can't sleep, sheep can't sleep because they got that beat. Tat, 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 All that racket wakes up. Cat! Cat can't sleep, cat can't sleep, cat can't sleep because she's got that beat. Prrr, meow! Prrr, meow! All that racket wakes up. Cow! Cows can't sleep, cows can't sleep, cows can't sleep because they got that beat. Swish, clank, swish, clank, swish, swish, clank, swish, clank. All that racket wakes old Hank. Hank.
Hank can't sleep. Hank can't sleep. Hank can't sleep because he's got that beat. Oh, woo, ha, woo. Oh, woo, ha, woo. All that racket wakes up. Look who's coming. Woo, woo. Lantern swinging. Sue can't sleep, Sue can't sleep, Sue can't sleep because she's heard that beat. Sue looks here, Sue looks there, no one here or anywhere. With a yawn, she thinks she'll go to sleep when... Beep, 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 beep. Chicks can't help it, they got that beat. Then, tat, tat, tatity, tat, tat, prrr, meow, swish, clank, swish, swish, clank, woo, ha, woo, 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 chick, chick, a jiggity chick. Everyone's dancing to that beat till they fall in a heap asleep. Farmyard Pop-Up Fun, written by Duglin Steer. The sun pops up on the noisy farm and the rooster pops up too. He wakes up all the animals with a caca doodle doo. Everyone's awake now, there's so much to do. First the cows need milking with the moo moo moo. The horse is very hungry. Is breakfast on the way? Come on, he calls to the farmer with a nay, nay, nay. The sheep are in the meadow. They're skipping la-di-da. They greet the morning sun with a ba, ba, ba. Piggy needs a cleaning. She is such a sloppy sort. She likes to roll in the mud all day. Snort, snort, snort. Snort, snort, snort. It's time for lunch on Noisy Farm. The ducks all want a snack. They look for food down at the pond. Quack, quack, quack. Quack, quack, quack. Goat is so very hungry that he's found some clothes to eat. But he wants more than socks and towels. Bleat, bleat, bleat. Cat is very sleepy. It's past her nap time now. She's much too tired to chase the mice. Meow, meow, <gasps> meow. <laughs> Doggy wants a bone for dinner. Before it gets too dark, he waits beside the farmhouse door. Bark, bark, bark. <laughs> Noisy farm is quiet now. The moon is shining bright. The farmer whispers round the farm, good night, good night, good night. <sighs> the end.
of animals on a farm. We've seen pigs and donkeys and sometimes even a walrus. But have you ever been to a farm with a peacock? Sometimes you might be surprised. In fact, my friend Truman is here with us today. Well, hello Truman. How are you today? Oh, Truman, what's wrong? Uh-huh. Well, no, that's, that can't be true. Poor Truman, he doesn't feel useful. And when Truman doesn't feel useful, he refuses to let his feathers show. Truman, you are useful. You do a lot for me. Really, you do. Will you please show us your feathers? Please, Truman. <gasps> oh, Truman, you look fantastic today. I like coming to Pack Library because they have a friendly staff, very helpful, and they have a great range of reading material. They have awesome story times, and because they are always so nice, and they always recommend gorgeous books for kids. There are so many books here, and my daughters are always excited for me to come back with treasures for them to read, and it's the highlight of my trip to Asheville. Um, I like playing inside the Pack Library. I like coming to the Pack Memorial Library because of a huge selection of books and there's like a lot of other libraries around here so if I want a book they don't have I can just have them order it. It has an excellent collection and the people who work here are very helpful and I really like the remodeling job they did. It looks great in here, nice and sunny. I like coming to the library because it's so fun that you can read books. I like to come to Pack Library because it has a lot of things that I like to read. In order to discover new authors and to take advantage of all the great kids programming that happens during the summer. You get to uh, learn new things with the books. I like coming to the Pack Memorial Library because there's such a variety of books here. You, any subject you can think of that you're interested in reading about, you can read about it here at your public library. There's lots of books and, and I love the superhero section. And I love the superhero section. is Barnyard Banter by Denise Fleming, and she painted the pictures. Here we go. Cows in the pasture, moo, moo, moo. <laughs> Roosters in the barnyard, cockle-doodle-doo. Hens in the hen house, cluck, cluck, cluck. Pigs in the waller, muck, muck, muck. Kittens in the hayloft, mew, mew, mew. Pigeons in the rafter, coo, coo, coo. Mice in the grain bin, squeak, squeak, squeak. Peacocks in the wire pen, squeak, squeak, squeak. But where's Goose? Hmm. Donkeys in the paddock, hee haw haw. Crows in the cornfield, caw caw caw. Crickets in the stone wall, chirp chirp chirp. Frogs in the farm pond. Burp, burp, burp. 
But where's Goose? Time to play What Doesn't Belong. Can you guess the animal that doesn't belong? Chicken, cow, or bear? Hmm. Great job. How about with this group? Donkey, monkey, or pig? Hmm. Monkey. Monkey. Oh. Nice one. I wonder which animal doesn't belong here. Giraffe, sheep, or goat. Hmm. favorite songs about the farm. Working on the farmyard, it's exhausting. A long, hard day, oh, followed by a great night of sleep. So, let's go to sleep. Good night. cock a doo doo Oh my, the cow's awake. When cows wake up in the morning, they always say hello, hello. When cows wake up in the morning, this is what they say. Moo, 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 moo. That is what they say. They say moo, 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 moo. That is what they say. Get back to sleep. Shh. Shh. Go oh, our friend the pig. When pigs wake up in the morning, they always say hello, hello. When pigs wake up in the morning, this is what they say. Oink, 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 oink. That is what they say. They say oink, 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 oink. That is what they say. <gasps> Back to sleep. <sighs> When dogs wake up in the morning, they always say hello, hello. When dogs wake up in the morning, this is what they say. Oh, oh, that is what they say. They say, oh, oh, that is what they say. Shh, back to sleep. Shh, shh. -doo -doo. Oh, here we have the horse. When horses wake up in the morning, they always say hello, hello. When horses wake up in the morning, this is what they say. Nay, nay. That is what they say. They say, nay, nay. That is what they say. Back to sleep. But whose job is it to take care of all these animals? A very important job it is. It's the farmer. Let's see. Go wide awake, <gasps> Ooh, and just like you or me. When farmers wake up in the morning, they always say hello, hello. When farmers wake up in the morning, this is what they say. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. That is what they say. They say, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. <gasps> that is what they say. Yay! Well done. We hope you really enjoyed Stories with Friends. We sure did. Please come find us at the local libraries, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>